Dividends are regarded as being one of the best ways that you can invest. I mean, it's a dream, right? Who wouldn't want to sit back, collect those payments and just do nothing? Tell them to bring me my money. And especially when you think each and every year, if you get more and more money, then the payouts are going to get larger and larger. In fact, at the moment, every share that I own pays a really nice dividend. And last year, I got around 5,000 in dividend payouts. But I think when people start investing, especially when it comes to dividends, there's a few things that people really overlook that are super, super important. And I know with myself, it took me a while, especially when I started out to learn these lessons. So today I'm going to share with you some really important lessons that you need to know and need to understand before you start dividend investing. And do make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to share with you my whole approach to dividends, my strategy and how I go about investing. Now, the first thing, it's really important that you grasp how dividends work. And to explain this in a clear way, I'm going to show you an example using my company. So here is me and I have a company that sells websites. So I have a company selling websites, services, and when I sell those websites and services, I hopefully make some kind of money. Now with that money I've made, I have to pay a few things. So I have to pay my team. So I've got a team of people who help me with certain tasks. I also have to pay for any kind of material. So you've got things like scripts, website hosting, tools, etc. I also need to pay myself some kind of salary. So let's say I pay myself $1,000 per month. Now, after all of those things are paid, I hopefully make some kind of profit. Now to that profit, I have to pay things like tax, but after tax, I can do things like pay myself, yes, you guessed it, a lovely dividend, which is what you're looking for in these companies. But what I can also do is instead of paying for that dividend, I can take that profit and I can actually reinvest it back into the company. So I can invest in things like tools, the team, maybe marketing, and hopefully, well, I wouldn't get that dividend that you're looking for, but hopefully my company might be worth maybe 20% more. So I'm taking away the dividend, but I'm actually gaining 20% growth in the company. So you might think, well, how does this work? This does relate quite specifically to you buying shares. So here is you, and you come along and you buy one share in your company, say it's something like Coca-Cola. So when you buy that share, you actually get a small, very, very, very small piece of that company. So when that company makes its profit, then you're paid out your dividend. So for example, that company pays a 5% dividend. So let's say you've invested $10,000 in that company. And when it pays out, you're going to receive your $500 for being a shareholder, which is going to make you very happy. Well, instead of getting that $500, what if you've got 0% dividend, but actually that profit that it made, it actually reinvested back into the company. So actually this company eventually becomes a much larger company, which is actually worth maybe 30% more in value. So you're not getting that dividend, but actually your money has gone up 30%. So instead of making your $500, you're actually gonna make $3,000 instead in return. So this just illustrates the power of reinvesting your profits into the company. So a lot of the time when a company is paying a high dividend, it means they've got cash, which a lot of the time they don't know what to do with. They don't have a plan to reinvest it and grow the company. Now it's important to note that sometimes a company will pay you a dividend because it wants to keep its investors happy. So that can happen too. So the key lesson here is if a company is paying you a high dividend, it's likely it's not focused on growth. So if you want cash and a payout, it's a good option. But if you're looking for that long-term growth of the company and holding for a long time, it's not always the best option. In fact, some of the biggest companies which pay the most reliable dividend, the chart doesn't seem to go very far at all. It's very stagnant and doesn't really move. That's because a lot of the time they've maybe exhausted their room for growth, they've got nowhere to grow, so the profit they generate, they're paying out to you as a dividend. But the thing you need to think about here is it's okay it's staying very static, but what about if it drops? Because even a 5% drop can really mess up your dividend goals. So for example, if you had your $10,000 invested in a company that dropped 5%, your $10,000 is then worth 9,500. Well, if you then get your dividend payout, which is 5%, you actually only get $475. So that means you're gonna lose $25 for holding that company. So you need to be careful you're in companies that are likely not to go down in the short term and you're focused on long-term growth. So you do need to be aware of what direction the company is heading. So if you're looking for companies that are gonna grow maybe 20% in a year, 
it's likely that a high dividend payer that's a reliable payer is not going to be the company for you. So let's move on to lesson number two, which is super important to know, which is vastly overlooked. So for this, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say you've got two funds or ETFs and both focus on the FTSE 100. You've got fund A and you've got fund B. So both funds contain the same 100 companies. So you've got 100 there and 100 here. So fund A doesn't pay a dividend at 0% and fund B pays a dividend of 2.5%. So which one would you go for? Now, obviously it's a no brainer, right? You're gonna go for company number B, which has got a 2.5% dividend. Well, that is actually wrong. So you might be thinking, well, doesn't it matter about the growth? So, okay, let's say these two funds both have a 5% average growth rate. So then which one would you choose? If you said fund B, well, unfortunately you're wrong again. The answer is both of these funds are actually the same. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's presume these two funds have the same amount of fees. So within these funds are the same 100 companies. So here are all the companies. So within here, some of the companies might pay a 2.5% dividend, some might pay a 1% dividend, some might pay a 3% dividend. So you get a total of all of these dividends within the fund. Well, what happens is all of that money has to go somewhere. So within fund A or fund B, all of that money is still within the fund. So it's either going to be within the growth or it's going to be within the dividend. Now you might think, well, I saw one that had 5% and the other one had 5%. So why has one got a 2.5% dividend? Well, the answer is that is probably wrong. Unfortunately, on a lot of apps and websites, the dividend yield isn't always that accurate. And I will make another video explaining dividend yield and how it works, so make sure you stick around for that one. So the lesson to learn here, if you've got two funds that are identical, one pays a dividend and one doesn't, and it's got the same companies, they're both gonna be similar. If you go for the growth one or you go for the dividend one, that money's got to go somewhere. It's not like they're kind of sneaking that money out of the funds and they're kind of banking it in the back pocket that money has to live within the fund. Now let's move on to lesson number three, which is perhaps the most important of all. And that is that dividends can be cut. Ah, what do I mean by that? Well, if a company's not making a profit, their earnings are declining, and they haven't got the money to pay a dividend, they have the option to cut it. Like with my company, if I wasn't making a profit, I wouldn't pay myself a big dividend. So in the same way, they're not gonna pay that dividend to you as a shareholder. So that can be really scary if you're relying on those dividends to make your income. This is where you have to look for really reliable dividend payers that have paid out a good dividend year on year on year, that are in a solid industry that aren't really going anywhere. And you're gonna want one that's paid out a dividend for maybe the last 10 years. And a company that steadily has increased their dividend year on year. And those companies do exist, so don't be totally scared. So just be aware there is the option to cut the dividend if they want it. So now you're the master of dividend you understand these core fundamentals, let's talk about when dividends are good. So for example, if you don't see a lot of growth in the economy and you don't believe that companies are going to grow, for example, the S&P 500 is crazy high at the moment and it might not go higher, then sometimes like now, dividends can be a really safe option against it. You can go for some reliable companies that don't move very much and have paid a really reliable dividend. The other time, of course, when dividends are really fantastic is if you need income. So for example, if you reached your end target and you had a lot of money and you wanted income that way, you could switch to dividend paying companies. If you're in the really early stages of investing, like I would class myself as, for example, I'm gonna be investing for at least another 10 or 20 years and even beyond that, well then, dividends for me at the moment aren't really a great option. And I know at the beginning I did say all of my companies are dividend paying companies. Now let me just explain that and talk you through my strategy. So at the moment, and especially in the last year, I knew the UK had been hit really hard and it was going to recover. And I still believe the UK has got a lot of room to grow. So what I did is I looked for really good, solid companies like your Taylor Wimpy and Aviva. They've got a lot of room to recover. For example, Aviva, I made 50% on, and I also got their fantastic dividend of 6 or 7%. So if you know a market on the whole is going to recover, you can actually pick some really good companies within there and use them to grow your portfolio. So for example, with me, I'm going to be putting more money into the FTSE 100, and I'm going to pick a few core companies that pay a really good dividend that are going to give me that growth plus give me that dividend, which is really the fantastic magic formula. And if you can hit that, then you're really onto a winner. So I hope that's cleared some things up. Hopefully you've learned some things. Let me know which companies you guys are holding down below. If you haven't already, come over and join our Facebook group. 
thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video